And so folks who were who consider themselves to be Marxists face something of a puzzle. And that is, why in the world is it that the worldwide workers' revolution that Marx's theory clearly predicted has not yet happened? And so they began to search for explanations. Some of the earliest folks to look at this problem were named Georgi Lukacs and, even more importantly, Antonio Gramsci. How did they explain how it is that the workers' revolution that had been predicted did not come about? They turned their attention back to the superstructure, that is, to the social and the political institutions. And they focused on them to a degree that Marx did not. And Marx, in fact, had ignored them. And what they hypothesized was, in fact, the superstructure itself can be a force, a powerful force, for resisting the kinds of changes in the economic base that Marx predicted would happen. In, in fact, the superstructure, the social institutions, the political institutions, the, the dominant ideology of the dominant group can have the effect of actually undermining revolutionary fervor. And then here's a critical term, critically important term, legitimizing the existing order. Gramsci had a word for this. He called it, or an expression for it, he called it cultural hegemony. Now, hegemony is a big, scary word. No, not really. It's simply that etymology indicates that it comes from a word that means leadership. And the idea is this, that the dominant economic group in the society exerts um, oppressive force on the weaker uh, uh, groups in society, not only through economic means, but also through the superstructure. The superstructure, the, the values of the society and the social institutions, they all create the impression, Grams, Gramsci said, this is cultural hegemony, that the existing economic order is entirely normal and indeed suggests that it couldn't be otherwise than it is. Why is it that the means of production are in the hands of just a few capitalists? Well, that's just the way that it's got to be given the way that we have set up our our economic system, our society, our political system. This is entirely natural and it couldn't be any other way. And what Gramsci claimed is that lots of folks in the oppressed group, indeed most folks even in the oppressed group, not just the oppressors but the oppressed, would buy in to this dominant ideology, part of the cultural hegemony, to the point that they would not seek to change the underlying economic base and content themselves with their second class position. Gramsci had a name for this that he had gotten, in fact, from Frederick Engels, false consciousness. That is, the, the workers uh, have the same view of the world, including the economic system, as do the capitalists. And because they do, they don't recognize what's really going on, which is they're being oppressed. So Gramsci is a, a pivotal figure here in the development of what eventually comes to be known as neo-Marxism in all of its varieties. Before we leave the subject of Gramsci, I should say one thing about the approach that he developed to trying to pursue the same revolutionary ideas uh, as had Marx. He generally rejected the idea of a straight-up workers' revolution in which the proletarians rise up and violently uh, take control of the means of production he thought that would probably be a cataclysmic failure. He said, instead, at least the first thing we need to do is to fight the hegemonic power. And how do we do that? By seeing to it that people who think as we do, who have the same vision of economic, social, and political rea reality, get placed into positions of prominence and influence within the existing social and political institutions. So we're talking about uh, in the universities, in other schools, in the courts, uh, in the legislature, so that these people in those positions can first of all declare uh, what is going on, at least from our point of view, which is this sort of hidden oppression through ideology, and then also uh, take steps to disrupt, actually is the word that was used, disrupt the existing uh, institutions in such a way as to precip precipitate a, a crisis. Hey, thank you so much for coming by and checking out this episode. If you want to see more clips like the one you just saw, click here and watch it right here. Or if you want to see the rest of the episode, you can click and watch it right here. Thanks for coming by, everybody. Bye-bye.